About three years ago, I switched from Final Cut Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and to be clear from the very beginning, I don't regret it at all, it was the right decision. However, I'm partially back to using Final Cut Pro since it has received some really nice updates. In this video, I will share why I'm back to using Final Cut Pro, at least in part, what has changed, and we will also figure out which app might be better for you. So why do I use Final Cut Pro again? It actually started, I think, in August last year, 2024, where I've been helping creating another YouTube channel that was essentially designed as a limited series. The channel is called Leander Falk, and we had a scripted story for that, which should be told through a vlog. And the thing was that in order to do so, we had to produce about 10 episodes within one month, which actually turned out 12 episodes, but in a little bit more time. So most of the time, it was like that we had only one day of shooting and another day for editing, sometimes even less because there have been episodes where timing was extremely important for the story because the viewer actually did not know if the story was real or if it was scripted. So I decided to edit all of that in Final Cut Pro because I knew from the very beginning of this project that I had to be super fast and that the production quality was not that important. And guess what? I edited so quickly in Final Cut Pro that I finished some of those episodes within just four hours and that's for a full vlog including color grading, and it's not something ultra simple. We still had good storytelling in there, used music effectively, sound effects, and all that stuff to make the vlogs high quality and engaging. I even edited about 70 to 80% of one episode on an iPad Pro 11 inch in Final Cut Pro for iPad, of course, while lying on a sofa because I felt a little tired one day. And I finished it up after that within just one hour on my MacBook Pro, so also super quick. And that got me thinking because every Every time I make one of my own YouTube videos in DaVinci Resolve, it takes me so much longer, like easily twi twice as long, maybe a bit less, but it feels about that much. I, I don't even understand why that is, but it is what it is. I noticed I was much faster in Final Cut. So when I came back from the project, I tried to use Final Cut Pro again, but without success, until version 11 came out, which added some of my most wanted features, but there was still a problem with HDR color grading because there are simply no HDR compatible plugins out there to generate a proper film look in Final Cut. Cut Pro. Luckily though, I figured out how to create my own HDR film look LUTs in DaVinci Resolve that I can use in Final Cut Pro and that was kind of the missing piece of the puzzle because it finally allowed me to create videos in Final Cut Pro that almost looked as good as if I created them in Resolve. There are still a few little things available in Resolve that I wish I had in Final Cut but they are not super important and I will show you which ones I mean when we talk about the down sides of Final Cut Pro a bit later in this video. And speaking of missing pieces, let's talk plugins because I actually like them a bit more in Final Cut Pro for several reasons, especially when they are from Motion VFX, which I've used for many years and are also a sponsor of today's video. Motion VFX creates some of the best and maybe even must have plugins for both Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and they've just released a few new ones that are especially useful. For example, MTuber 4 gives you you all the essentials for YouTube videos, social media animations, and remind people to like and subscribe without having to say it. It's great for viewer retention. It also includes overlay effects and camera movements, so you can quickly add polished screen effects like these ones here. As mentioned, it also comes with lots of titles, but for that, I actually prefer the new M How To plugin, which they made together with Shoris. I just discovered it and really like how the titles combine clean design with a handwriting font. Even better, it includes tools that are perfect for tutorial videos, things like pointers, highlights, and step-by-step -step visuals, definitely worth checking out if you create educational content. Another big update is the Motion Blur AI they added to the M Film Look plugin. Unlike traditional motion blur effects that just blend frames and often look a bit off, this one uses AI to create blur that actually looks natural and it renders surprisingly fast, so if you shoot high frame rates often or forget your ND filter, something that definitely never happened to me, this can help you bring back realistic motion blur. They also have hundreds of other plugins that cover pretty much anything you would need as a video creator. I will link my favorites 
below. You can even start for free with something like the MCamRig plugin to add simple camera moves or try the Final Cut Pro subscription for 14 days to see which tools actually improve your workflow. So definitely check out Motion VFX plugins. I can't recommend them enough. You will find the links in the description below. But now let's come to some direct comparisons between Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve so you can better determine which one is right for you. First, there is speed and simplicity. I would clearly say that Final Cut wins in that regard, as mentioned before, both in terms of performance and general editing speed. Performance-wise, it's definitely a bit faster than Resolve, especially when it comes to things like effects, graphics, titles, etc. But what's even more important for me is the editing speed. It's just faster in Final Cut Pro, in part, I think, because of the magnetic timeline. It just feels more natural to edit like that, and therefore it's faster. But it's probably not all that. Maybe it's generally because everything is more cleaned up and you find everything quicker. That's definitely because it has a typically simple Apple design, which lets you find and access everything very quickly. Now, there are also a few features in Resolve that speed up editing, like dynamic zoom, for example, and the ability to fade clips in and out quickly in the timeline, much like fading audio in and out in Final Cut Pro. But overall, I found editing in Final Cut Pro to be much faster. One aspect that speeds up editing in Resolve quite a bit though is the use of power bins and power grades, which are not directly available in Final Cut Pro. However, you do have the ability to save effects presets, which essentially work fairly similarly with a few exceptions. So overall, Final Cut wins here, but I do think Apple could copy some features from Resolve to make it even better. Next up is flexibility and professional listen. What do I mean with that? I mean how much each editor lets you customize everything. Here I clearly have to say that Resolve wins, mainly because it integrates Fusion, which essentially lets you create completely custom effects, titles, etc. And even on the edit and other pages, you have a lot more options available to customize everything. In version 20, you will even get a keyframe editor directly on the edit page. And that's pretty significant. I think Final Cut just can't compete at this point but it also doesn't have to because most of the time, at least for general video creators like me, you don't need this much flexibility and it can actually get in your way. So in terms of flexibility and professionalism, I would clearly have to give it to DaVinci Resolve here, but it's really the question if you really need that degree of flexibility when you edit your videos. So kind of a draw so far, but what about color grading? That's where Resolve used to completely dominate. I especially love Resolve's color management and the many powerful tools available on the color page, including the glow effect, mid-tone detail, HDR tools, color slice, and many others. But I also have to say that I don't absolutely need all of those tools and can work around them oftentimes in Final Cut Pro with the right tools and by using LUTs that I generate in Resolve for Final Cut. It's pretty strange actually because I essentially need DaVinci Resolve to use Final Cut for color grading the way I want. However, I'm a bit unique in that regard because I do HDR and generally find color grading pretty important probably a bit too important for social media. And that brings me to my next point, which is that both Final Cut Pro and Resolve have great features for HDR color grading. In Resolve, the color management, HDR tools, etc., and especially the HDR10 plus metadata function are really good and important for HDR color grading. But I found adjusting graphics, green captures, and generally Rec. 709 footage to HDR PQ pretty cumbersome in Resolve. It's because the color space trends Form for whatever reason never does what I want when it comes to adjusting the luminance level and such. And for that, I usually end up using curves to adjust manually, which takes more time. That's exactly the opposite in Final Cut. There is no way to generate dynamic HDR 10 plus metadata, but Final Cut has this HDR tool effect, which makes it super easy to limit the output luminance and transform Rec. 709 to HDR. That might not be super important for many, but I often need to mix my footage with screen captures and other graphics for my tutorials, and that is a lot easier in Final Cut. 
And that's why I actually ended up using Final Cut and Resolve in conjunction. I do my color grading in Final Cut Pro, then export the video as a ProRes 42 HQ HDRPQ file, import it into DaVinci Resolve and create the HDR 10 plus metadata there. And then I export it as a final HEVC 10 bit 42 HDRPQ video file for uploading to YouTube. But of course, it's only for HDR. If you color grade normal SDR, Rec 709, you won't have to do any of that. Next up is plugins. This is a bit two-sided. In, in Resolve, you don't actually need many plugins. You can create most effects, transitions, titles, etc. yourself. And there are also lots of functionalities implemented already. But you will still buy some plugins just to save a bit of time. In Final Cut Pro, on the other hand, you will inevitably end up buying more plugins to add certain functions occasionally. For example, a neat video as the noise reduction in Final Cut Pro is not that good, but of course, also for titles, etc. So you will end up spending more money overall on Final Cut Pro. But therefore, plugins also perform much better in Final Cut Pro. The reason for that is not the plugin makers, but the fact that Fusion and Resolve seems to be pretty taxing on your computer. And Resolve plugins are usually made using Fusion, which slows down performance, therefore. Also, using plugins in Resolve can often be a bit more cumbersome. For example, certain plugins from Motion VFX and other brands have tracking functionalities for callouts. To track those, you always have to go into Fusion and do some things there, which takes time in Resolve. And in Final Cut, you basically just have to drag the tracking point to where you where it should track, press a button, and the tracking is done in a matter of seconds. Also worth mentioning here is that with the recent updates, especially with version 11, Apple added some features to Final Cut that I find extremely important. One notable feature is the magnetic mask, which is essentially the same as the magnetic mask in Resolve. However, I find it works even better because it's quicker and more intuitive to use. You simply drag effects onto a part of your clip in the viewer and it automatically creates the magnetic mask. That actually feels fun and it also means you need to buy fewer plugins for Final Cut today compared to the past. Therefore, of course, Resolve releases new features more often. For example, the version 20 update introduced some features that I really like, especially the script-based editing and the music extension. These are features I would love to see in Final Cut as well. And Apple could generally update Final Cut a bit more often with new features. So it's really hard to say which is better when it comes to features and plugins. DaVinci Resolve definitely comes with more built-in functions that are also more customizable, while Final Cut requires more plugins and therefore is more expensive overall. However, the plugins in Final Cut are also easier to use and faster. And when it comes to audio, I can't really decide which one I prefer. In Final Cut, I appreciate its simplicity and the fact that the audio effects often come with presets that work well out of the box because I'm not great at audio editing at all. On the other hand, Resolve offers more options to edit audio, including track-based editing, which I also enjoy. And its voice isolation definitely works better because I find the quality slightly better than Resolve compared to Final Cut. So I would would say it's really a draw. If you're an audiophile, you likely prefer Resolve for its professionalism, but if you want to keep it simple yet sufficient with enough options, Final Cut is definitely adequate and might actually be a bit quicker. What I personally ended up with was that I simply saved some presets in Final Cut for different microphones and situations I shoot in to achieve decent audio quickly. Now the next one is big for Resolve. What if you're not editing alone? If you work with an editor, this could be a deal breaker because collaboration is a significant strength of Resolve because you can just pay a small monthly fee to use Blackmagic Cloud, which automatically creates proxy files and syncs them with the cloud and Resolve. And this allows your editor to start editing from anywhere in the world right away. For example, I recently traveled to Indonesia and only brought my iPad Pro 11 inch instead of my MacBook Pro, which is definitely not suitable for editing in Resolve. So my editor, Daniel, was able to edit the video and I could finish up the edit on the iPad, do a quick color grade and upload the video from there. With Final Cut, such collaborations wouldn't be possible because there is no proper collaboration feature built into it. There are some third party solutions, but as far as I know, nothing even comes close to the collaboration features available in Resolve. And that's also another reason I use both Final Cut Pro and Resolve in conjunction. Like initially I mentioned only for HDR color grading and HDR 
HDR metadata, but it's also for col collaboration with my editor. Like every time he edits a video, we use Resolve simply because the collaboration is much more effective. And since he edits the video, speed is not a primary concern. Sorry, Daniel. So these are my biggest findings or points that are most important for me when it comes to comparing Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. However, I also want to mention that it's not just about which is the better editor, but also which one teaches me the most. That's why I think that despite maybe going 80% back to Final Cut now, using DaVinci Resolve as my main editor for about three years and continuing to use it as my secondary editor was a very good decision because I learned so much about editing and color grading by using DaVinci Resolve. I think my biggest takeaway was color management. I learned to have one part in my workflow where I bring all my video footage from different cameras to the same color space and make the primary adjustments before leaving the lock color space. And now color management is not natively integrated into Final Cut, at least not properly, but I figured out my own way to manage color as effectively as possible, applying the techniques I learned in Resolve to Final Cut. And it, it does not work as well as in Resolve, but it definitely gives me the results I want. And this leads me to things I wish were integrated into Final Cut Pro. Firstly, proper color management and ideally a button to convert the timeline into something similar to Resolve's color page where we can group clips and apply color grades and effects to both groups and individual clips. It's quite easy to mess up the timeline in Final Cut when doing a final color grade. So I, I really wish we had this feature. And additionally, there should be a proper glow effect like the one in Resolve. I always set this effect to screen mode, soft light and reduce opacity to create a nice soft glow to add a bit more pop to my footage. And a similar effect is missing in Final Cut and I haven't found a plugin for it yet. Another feature is the midtone detail, which I feel is a bit underappreciated in even Resolve. It's a powerful tool, especially when used locally, because by applying a power window or a ma mask over your face and then increasing the midtone detail within the power window, it sharpens the image slightly without a typical digital sharpening look. I, I haven't found a plugin that replicates this effect as well as Resolve does in Final Cut Pro. If you know one or also a plugin for the glow effect, let me know in the comments. I'm definitely looking for tips here. And these are, I would say, all features that I really miss in Final Cut because most of what I need is either available now in Final Cut or I have on plugins to replicate it. And this brings me to the next problem with comparing Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. It's definitely difficult to recommend one over the other to specific groups of people because if we ignore the price, Final Cut is clearly geared more toward ambitious hobbyists or social media video creators where speed is more important than being super professional and having endless customization options. Resolve, on the other hand, is clearly the app for cinematographers, documentary filmmakers, commercial filmmakers, etc. who need a professional grade app. However, if we take the price into account, DaVinci Resolve is actually more affordable than Final Cut, while hobbyists and social media creators are usually the ones wanting to save money. Additionally, the learning curve in Resolve is also steeper. And that's why I find it challenging to recommend one over the other, even for completely different types of creators. Obviously, if you're a professional cinematographer, you will go for Resolve. But if you're a social media video creator, the decision is more complicated because Resolve can save you money, teach you a lot, and offer more options. In contrast, Final Cut costs more, teaches you less, and offers less flexibility, but also allows for faster editing. As a social media video creator, you're usually not paid by the hours. So while Final Cut costs more initially, it could actually earn you more money in the long term because you can produce more videos. But this only applies if you're making money from video creation. If not, Resolve is definitely a cheaper option overall. So you have to decide for yourself, pay more money and be faster or save money and be a bit slower, but with a much more professional app, arguably one of the most professional video editing apps available. As I'm invested in both, I would just continue using them both. Final Cut for speed and DaVinci Resolve for collaboration, HDR10 metadata, and to create LUTs to use in Final Cut Pro. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you prefer Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve and why? Maybe you have some different takes 
on it than I do. And if you want to learn how to color grade in HDR properly in DaVinci Resolve, check out the video here in the corner where you will learn more. I will also publish a similar video for Final Cut Pro soon, so make sure to subscribe for that. And if you use DaVinci Resolve, don't worry, I will continue making videos for it, especially when interesting new features are released. Okay, I guess we're done here. See you next time.